Because you have you have to have stuff when you when you're part of a team. You know, you have to have the shirt. You have to with the Steelers. You got to have the terrible towel, and you cheer. And last season, boy, did, wasn't it great starting out? We went <laughs> <laughs> and we were cheering, and we we're going, we're going to have an undefeated season. We're going all the way. We're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> and then week twelve came. And 13 and 14 and 15 and 16. And then the playoffs came. And we weren't swinging those terrible towels so much anymore, were we? In fact, it got so bad. And I kept saying, they're not going to win another game the rest of the season. So I put my towel away. And I actually cheered for the Browns in the playoffs. That's how bad it got. And as I think about this last season, isn't that the way it was for Jesus? As he got on that donkey and rode into town and everybody was cheering, weren't they? Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. But then just like us Steeler fans, by Friday, they weren't happy and they were shouting, crucify him. So it's so easy for us to turn on our Savior. In Matthew, it says, Hosanna in the highest. First it says, blessed those who, is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And they were waving, right? But then we got to chapter 27 in Matthew, it says, which of the two do you want me to release to you? The governor asked. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Christ, Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted louder, crucify him. They're just like the Steeler fans. Isn't it nice that we do know the rest of the story? So today we are able to shout Hosanna in the highest, but you can't do it very good if you don't have a palm. So I would ask the children to please come forward after I pray. The children come forward and pass out the palms are up here. But let me pray first. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we so easily turn away from you. When we so easily get angry and reject you. Heavenly Father, help us to keep shouting Hosanna. As we go through this, this week, we know how it ends. We can shout he is risen next Sunday, but don't let us miss what came in the middle. Amen. Okay, kids, if you will come up and pass out the palms. Okay, does everybody have one? I'm, gonna, I'm going to read Matthew 21, 9, and then the second time, I'm going to read the first part, and you're going to respond, Hosanna in the highest. Matthew 21, 9. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So that's your part. Are you ready? Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's try that one more time. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At this time, our him of praise, lift up your heads, ye mighty gates.
seated. And as I talked about how we can be cheering one moment and griping and complaining the next moment, I want you to examine this past week. Think about where you fell short of the glory of God, where we need to improve. With that thought in mind, please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, on this day, your son entered the rebellious city that later rejected him. We confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's. Our faith is often more show than substance. Our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, son of David, savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all we have and all we are, trusting you to forgive, to heal, and to receive us as your own. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we confess to God this day, and not just confess those sins, but repented of those sins, turned away from those sins, I have good news for you. Jesus made it possible that you are forgiven.
this time, joys and concerns from the church family. We want to continue to pray for Linda, Bernie's daughter, uh, for continued healing. Also, Bessie Dapp passed this morning, so we want to pray for uh, the Dapp family that, as they begin the grieving process. But what a wonderful thing for Bessie. Heather, I want you to hear this. She's going to be with Jesus this Easter, and that is a wonderful thought. Also, um, those traveling in, in the next week, Mark and Cheryl Ann, and if there's anyone else, um, we need to keep them in our prayers for, for safe travels. Also, Dave is having a procedure done tomorrow on his arm, and he's just not feeling very good, so we need to continue to pray for him. Are there others? Tomorrow is uh, Vietnam uh, Veterans Day. Remember the 58,000 plus. <laughs> Do that, Dave. Uh, also, it's good to see Phyllis back. It's so good to have you back after a long, crazy year. We're, we're slowly going to get there, aren't we? Almost through it. Anyone else? Let's pray. Father, we come to you this day on this very, it's a very special day. As we remember. And even though each and every Sunday morning we remember, this is something special to remember. You came on that little cold. You rode in and people were cheering and it seemed like such a victory till Friday came. Then everything changed. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we know how this all ends. We do not have to live in fear because we will spend all of e eternity with you. If we place our lives in your hands we accept Jesus as our Savior, if we believe, and I mean really believe, so that it changes our lives. So we thank you today. We praise you today for the gift given. Because we have eternal life right now. Yes, someday we'll shed these bodies. But we will live forever, and we praise you for that. We praise you that Jesus did everything necessary so that we could enjoy that life and enjoy it right now. Heavenly Father, as always, when we come to this place, there are people in need that need your touch, that need your comfort, that need the peace that only you can offer. We lift those needs and those concerns and those joys to you this day. We think of all those that lost their lives serving this country. And we know there's a special place for those people who lay down their lives for people that they didn't even know. Bring comfort to their families this day. Bring comfort to their friends, to those that served with them. Wrap your loving arms around them. Also, we think of Linda, who's really been struggling, and, and she's getting better, but very, very slowly. Father, we know you have the power to heal. And so, whatever healing that Linda needs, we know you'll give her. Also, we lift the Dak family, especially Sue and Heather that are here this day, Bring them comfort. Bring them peace in knowing that Bessie's going to be in heaven celebrating Easter with you and with her Savior. That's the hope the rest of us have. We also lift Dave to you as he has this procedure done tomorrow. May it ease his pain that soon they'll be able to diagnose the problem and fix his shoulder or his neck and just make him feel better. So we, we pray for that. Give those doctors wisdom. We also pray for traveling mercies. 
We think of Mark and Cheryl Ann, and we pray that they get to Texas safely and return home safely. We'll miss them, but what a wonderful opportunity for them to be with family. And so um, we think of them. Also, we're grateful this day that Phyllis is here worshiping with us, and, and soon we can start to get back to normal and we'll see some other familiar faces that will be worshiping with us. But we, we just pray that those people that aren't here this day, that, that you, you touch them and uh, that they sense your presence as we sense your presence in this sanctuary in a mighty way this day. And as we come to this place, if it were not for Jesus, we may as well be home today. If it were not for the sacrifice he made, we know that when he went into Jerusalem that day, he knew that week was going to get difficult. He might have been the only one back then that did, but he knew, and he went anyway. And so we're grateful, and we thank you. We think of his the miracles he performed while he was here. We remember the, the words of wisdom, and we remember the prayer he said to you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our hymn of preparation O glory, laud, and honor. message for today comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 19 beginning with verse 28 let us pray Heavenly Father you have a message for us this day open our hearts to receive that message give us the strength and the courage to do what you tell us Heavenly Father your words your words, they matter. So let us listen with new hearts, with new ears. Let us see your word with new eyes this day. 
in the name of your son Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 28. It's entitled, Jesus Comes to Jerusalem as King. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is God's holy word. Thanks be to God. The story of Jesus' triumphal entry. It's very familiar to all of us. In fact, I would guess that almost every Palm Sunday that you've been in worship, you've heard a scripture like this, either this scripture or one very similar in the other Gospels. But the wonderful thing about God's word is this, that each and every time you hear it, he will show you something new. Something you haven't seen or heard before. Something that just dawns on you. That's God revealing his word to you. Now, I have preached this many times. Talking about the triumphal entry. And as I read this scripture, that when I, when I did sermons on it, um, sometimes I would focus on Jesus coming into town. Or one time I focused on the people in the crowd. I also focused on the disciples. I even focused on the donkey one time. <laughs> but today I'm going to focus on the men who owned the little donkey. Let's look at verses 32 and 33. Those who went, were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And something that dawned on me, you know, when they're questioning that, is why would the owners allow the disciples to take their little donkey? Why would they just let them go ahead? Now, something that Jesus prearranged for all this to happen I don't know whether he did, he did or not, because in Scripture, it really doesn't tell us why the men were so agreeable to let their donkey go. We're just not sure about that. But one thing we do know is this. It was the fulfillment of old Scripture prophecy. In Zechariah 9.9, it says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So it was prophesied that Jesus would come in on the donkey. So the question is, what can we learn from those men who so easily let Jesus take their donkey? Let's look at verses 30 and 31 again. It says, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. 
If anyone asked you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. So what can we learn about these men? Well, they were willing to give the Lord what they had. The Lord needs it. Now, I don't know how many donkeys they had, whether they had two or whether they had 200. But the fact is this, the Lord needed it, and they gave it to him. Jesus used a donkey in his most triumphant public moment here on earth. A donkey, a stubborn, smelly, small donkey. You see, the people that day expected him to come on a great stallion, as it talks about in Revelation. They expected Jesus to come in that way on this great stallion. Instead, he's on this little smelly donkey. But that was what was prophesied in Old Testament scripture. It said a donkey, and so a donkey it was. And as I said before, the wonderful thing about scripture is this. That he always has something new for us. Always has something exciting for us. And this is what I learned new as I prepared the scripture, as I prepared the sermon this day. I have always said God doesn't need us to fulfill his prophecy, to fulfill his mission here on earth. Like, I thought, he doesn't need us. He's God. But then I read in this scripture, the Lord needs it. Hmm. Here it is, folks. We are part of God's plan. He needs us because he chooses to need us. He uses us because he chooses to use us. Maybe you haven't thought of yourself as part of God's plan. But that's exactly what you are. You're part of God's plan. You have been chosen by God to fulfill his great plan, the great plan he has for mankind, for all salvation. We are partners in ministry with Christ. And you know what? God doesn't always ask us for big things, does he? And God never asks us for what we don't have. Now, I don't know what other animals, the, guy that had, the guys that had the donkey, but they didn't go and ask him for a goat or a pig. They knew that they had donkeys. God never asks us for what we don't have. You may feel that you don't have anything to offer God, but God sometimes takes simple things and he takes small things and he uses them in a great way. You see, the Bible is full of people who gave what they had and God used those things. We think of Moses with his staff. He parted the Red Sea and saved the Israelite people. Rahab gave a corner of her roof so that the Israel, Israelite spies would be safe. We, we think of the widow at Sarapath. She gave oil and flour so that Elijah wouldn't go hungry. We think of the wi widow with a couple coins. She gave them. Or the boy with five loaves and two fishes. So the question is, what do you have to give? The person who gives their time to visit the sick, those in nursing homes. They might think that that isn't very important, but they might be surprised when they get to heaven. The Sunday school teacher who teaches week in and week out. She just doesn't think that it really is making a difference, but then all of a sudden she receives a thank you card from one of the students. It's a big deal. Lives were changed. We think of the prayer warriors of this church. They might think that they're praying and praying and their prayers aren't being answered or even received. But what they don't see is God changing lives and changing circumstances in response to those prayers. The people who faithfully tithe each week. You might think that what you have isn't very much. But what you don't realize is God multiplies what we give to do great things in the kingdom of God. The person that takes the time to send a card to write a note, to visit the shut-ins, to visit the sick, they may feel like they have nothing at all to offer. 
that you might be the person that encouraged the discouraged. It might be more than you realize. It might be just what the Lord needs. Let's look at verses 35 and 38 through 38. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coal, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the crowd, the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Because the owners of the donkey lent Jesus the donkey, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God. They began to praise God. They began to cheer. They began to wave their palms and sing Hosanna to God, to Jesus. Folks, you might think that you don't have anything valuable to offer. But in the hands of God, what is simple, what seems worthless, is valuable. It's valuable in the hands of God. So here's the question that each of us have to answer this day. What is God asking of you? What does he want you to give? Your talent? Your time? Your possessions? Your willingness to obey? What is God asking of you? It might be small. On the other hand, it might be great. But what we do know is this. If the Lord is asking for it, then the Lord needs it. And if he needs it, he will use it. And he will multiply it. And amazing things will happen because of what you've given. Now there was a man. His name was Bob McFall. And he had aplastic anemia. And the only way, his only hope to live, was if he had a bone marrow transplant. So they tested all of his family, and it just so happened that a first cousin was a perfect match. He could save Bob's life. The problem was he refused to do it. Even though Bob would die, he would not give up his bone marrow. So Bob took him to court and sued him. The verdict came back, even though it was reprehensible what the cousin was doing, it was not illegal, and he did not have to give the bone marrow up. Three weeks later, Bob died. So the question is, will you be like Bob's cousin and give nothing? Give nothing. Refuse. Or will you be like the owners of the donkey and give what God is asking of you? What God is saying he needs. What is your donkey? What does the Lord need from you? We've been given a great example of sacrificial love. When we look to the love of Jesus, that's exactly what we see. And as we look at today's scripture, this is what I want you to notice. It really isn't about what we give. It's about our hearts. And it really isn't about what we can do for Jesus. It's about our response because of what he has done for each of us. So again, I ask, what is your donkey? Listen to God. He'll tell you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes we think that we don't have any gifts, but you have given us gifts gifts to use for the kingdom, that others would come to know your saving grace. Heavenly Father, this day, reveal to us what you need from us. Give us the strength to give it to you so that lives would change, so that others would come to know you. Heavenly Father, shame on us when we think we have nothing to give. 
that you have empowered us, you have strengthened us, you have provided for us. We're grateful this day that someone gave that we might come to know you. Now it's our turn to give that others would come to know you. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made on our behalf, Jesus. We praise you. You deserve all the glory. You deserve the honor. You deserve to be shouted Hosanna in the highest. Oh, Father, we look to this week ahead, difficult days ahead for Jesus. For us, it was all good. It's all behind us, but Jesus lived it. And it was horrible. But we know how the story ends. So next Sunday, we'll be shouting, He is risen. But Heavenly Father, help us to have the strength not to shout crucify him on Friday. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, the one who sacrificed all for us. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is all hail the power of Jesus' name. And now as we leave this place, be very careful not to just stump over the next Sunday because if you do, you won't realize the sacrifice that was made for you. You'll just miss it. Shout today, though. Hosanna in the highest. And all God's children say, Hosanna in the highest. Let's try that again. Hosanna.